Donkey Kong Country 3. Now, this game was released super late in the Super Nintendo's life cycle. I mean, this game came out when? November of 1996? And a month before that, the Nintendo 64 was released in North America. So you would imagine that most kids will be focused on the newer offering from Nintendo. That may explain why this game is so overlooked. And around that time, kids were probably just gushing over Mario 64. So I understand. So now that we have the Nintendo Switch Online service, which gives us access to many Super Nintendo games, I decided to go ahead and talk about the game that not many people mention when talking about the Donkey Kong Country series. Let's see if this game can stand up with the two amazing games in the series of platformers. Is this something I could tell you to play today if you had the chance? Well, let's take a look. Plot wise, DKC3 is pretty much the same as DKC2, but this time both Donkey and Diddy Kong were kidnapped. So it's up to Dixie Kong and her baby cousin Kitty Kong to travel around and rescue the Kongs from the Kremlins once again. You will explore different areas in this beautiful land and overcome different challenges that each level will throw at you. Control wise, Dixie is pretty much the same as she was in DKC2, and Kitty Kong is a bit heavier, controlling more like Donkey Kong in DKC1. So in terms of the gameplay, this is your standard DKC experience. You'll spend the majority of the time jumping and bouncing off enemies and collecting collectibles. Now aesthetically, this is probably my favorite looking game in the original trilogy. There's something so relaxing about looking at these stages. The mountains in the distance, the warmer color palette, and just the overall country theme of the game. It really stands out and you could tell they were pushing the SNES abilities to the max. There's also a pretty sizable hub world for you to get to level to level. In terms of the levels themselves, I applaud Rare for really experimenting with some of these levels. You have levels where you're climbing the inside of a tree, a stage where your controls are completely reversed, and also stages where you have to avoid these exploding barrels that are climbing on these ropes. I found the new level gimmicks to be interesting, but despite how great these levels look and what they did with them, I don't know, for some reason they were not as rememberable as the previous two games for me for some reason. Even with the added mini games, which I do find fun, I, you know, I just don't know. I can also say the same thing about the soundtrack for this game. David Wise is back, and this time, the soundtrack does have some great tracks, like the intro railroad track, Crystal Chasm, and the Cascade Capers, but as a whole, this is not a soundtrack I would really revisit with the same excitement as DKC 1 or 2. By no means is the soundtrack bad. It's good, but just not as rememberable as previous ones. Now, one thing this game did do right was the boss fights. The boss fights are definitely some of the most rememberable fights in the series. All the bosses offer a unique challenge and was definitely way more than jumping or just throwing a barrel at them. So the boss fights in this game are definitely more engaging than the ones in the past, and I for sure had fun with them. Now, the animal buddies of course make a return, and Honestly, I really like the newcomer Ellie the Elephant. She is no Rambi or Squawks, but I found Ellie to be super charming and I admired the ability to use water as a projectile. I found it was super cool. But overall, DKC3 is a good game. Is it as rememberable as DKC1 or 2? I personally don't think so, but I would still recommend this game if you're a fan of the first two titles. The levels are beautiful and it's still an overall fun experience. I thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.